So in this video, I'm going to do review of my trades for the year 2021, year to date. So obviously, it's not the end of the year 2021, but I've already done some quite a lot of trades since the beginning of 2021, and I wanted to show you my results. So hopefully, it's maybe helpful for some of you, and also want to be transparent in the way that I'm trading to show what am I doing, what is working for me, or what is not working for me. So hopefully, maybe it helps some of you who'd like to do the same. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, where I show my PNL, where I show my trades, then don't stay to subscribe to my channel and liking this video. It's an amazing way to let me know that you actually enjoy this type of videos and you'd like to see more videos like this one. So regarding the broker that I use, I personally use Testyworks. I think it's a broker that offers a lot of capabilities, a lot of features, and I think it's really an amazing broker overall. So first of all, I'm going to go over my portfolio. I'm going to show what type of trades I have on and what I plan on taking in the next days, in the next weeks. So it makes sense for you. So you understand what is my thought process here. And after that, I'll go into my transaction statement, into my history, so you can see what are the type of trades that I've been taking and what are my results so far for the year 2021. So as I said, Testworks only shows the PNL for the year to date, meaning that right now we are in April 2021. So we're only going to show the PNL since the beginning of January 2021. So right now we are in my portfolio tab, and as you can see, I don't necessarily have a lot of trades going on right now. I have five trades, which is, in my opinion, even though there are some people that like to have a lot of trades on personally sticking to this type of number of trades like five trades is something that i tend to do quite a lot even though sometimes i have more trades on i have like around eight trades nine trades on um i don't necessarily have a lot of trades right now on and the reason why i don't necessarily have a lot of trades on right now is because next week starts the next earning season and for those who don't know what earnings are well publicly traded companies every quarter they share how much money they earn during the last fiscal quarter and that gives some great opportunities to trade and if you're not familiar to how you can trade earnings i made a video on the subject where i share my complete process my whole process i explain all the things that i use us to trade earnings so if you want to check it out i'll put the link of the video in the description of this video but as you can see i still have some trades right now that i have on you see that i have i sold a put on ford i sold a call on ccl i sold a call on wells forgo I sold a call on XLF and I sold a put on Under Armour. So as you can see, I have a mix of selling puts and selling calls. And there is one big reason why I like to do it that way. So as you can see, I'm selling more calls than I'm selling puts at the moment. And the reason I don't necessarily have sold a lot of puts right now at the moment, I have more calls that I sold rather than puts, is because all my puts got into winning position. So I just closed them at a certain profit target. And that's why now I have like the calls left. I have three calls left and two puts left. And how I'm going to choose my trades, I like to play in a way what I call play the extreme. For example, if I see that a stock is at the low end of its trading range, well, for me that's going to give me the opportunity to sell a put on and by doing this i'm trying to get a caution of safety when selling a put so for example if you have a stock that is trading at 50 dollars usually and then it falls to 40 dollars then for me it's an opportunity to sell a put let's say at the 35 strike so as to collect quite a good premium and it's going to give me a margin of safety so basically the way i'm building an option portfolio and the way i manage it is that i'm going to play the extreme if the stock goes at the low end of its trading range then it's going to to give me opportunities to sell puts on and usually the good thing is that when a stock goes down the implied volatility is going to go up making premiums more expensive so when you sell puts on stocks that are at the low end of the trading range meaning that they went down recently it's going to allow you to sell puts at a quite a good premium you're going to collect quite a good premium making you better profits and on the opposite when a stock goes at the upper end of its trading range i'm going to sell calls because i'm going to bet that the stock is going to come back to a certain mean so this way of trading, so I really oversimplified it. I really don't want to go into much details here because it would take too long. I'll do it in the next video. But what I want to show here is, as you can see, I have sold some puts, I have sold some calls. And the reason why I mainly want to do this is to keep a portfolio that is somewhat delta neutral. So what does that mean, delta neutral? Well, it means that you're going to have some short trades and you're also going to have some long trades. And the goal for that is that if the market goes away, for example, if the market falls all of a sudden, I'm not going to be in much troubles because I'm also going to have some short trades that I have on. Because the big risk is that, let's say that you sell, for example, 10 puts on 10 different stocks and then the market crashes. And then all your stocks that you have sold puts on are going to go south and you're going to find yourself in big drawdowns. And one thing that really helped me mitigate a potential drawdown is to try to balance my portfolio, not only selling puts, but also adding some calls 
tools, even though I have a bias to the put side. I tend to sell puts way more easily than I tend to sell calls and just because the market tends to go up over time. And it's a very simple yet very effective strategy so as to keep some kind of balance. After that, don't get me wrong. It's not because you have a delta neutral portfolio that you're going to make money automatically. It doesn't work that way. However, it's a simple yet effective method of trying to keep some kind of delta neutrality and personally that helped me a lot. And from next week on for like let's say four or five weeks, there's going to be a lot of earnings appearing so I'm going to start selling a lot of short strangles on those stocks so as to improve my returns. Now if we go into my transaction statement into my activity tab and we go into the transaction part so you see that in terms of realized gains I made around two thousand dollars a bit less than two thousand dollars in realized gain and in unrealized gains I still am short of five hundred dollars worth of unrealized gain that I have on right now meaning that in terms of open trades in terms of open positions I am up $483 on those positions that I haven't closed right now. And if you don't know why, for example, you haven't seen those $483 right now in my option portfolio, it's the reason for that is that I also have stock positions, meaning that I have bought shares in a company that I believe in, and that brought me some nice profits since obviously the crash of 2020. If you have bought some stocks at the end of the COVID crash, then you must have made some nice profits. And to be honest, I actually took some profits. I even sold a lot of shares at the beginning of 2021 that I had previously bought, and I made some nice profits on that. So as you can see in my transaction statement, all of those show all of the stocks that I have actually traded where I actually realized some gains. So you see that there is one column realized gain, there is one other column unrealized gains, and the realized gains meaning that what are the bank profits that I made. So as you can see, there's a bit of everything. And um, basically, there are some stocks where I made a lot more money, for example, um, X, like the, t the ticker X, where I made a lot more money than other stocks. Uh, Exxon Mobile also, I had made a video on the subject, it was uh, back in November, where I had made a video on the subject where I was saying that Exxon Mobile, in my opinion, was absolutely undervalued and that it had to go up, it was going to go up, and well, that's what I did. After that, there are some stocks, for example, like Carnival Cruises, you can see from the stock ticker CCL, where I made more money relative to the other stocks, and the reason for that is that I've been, for example, using the poor man's cover call strategy on Carnival Cruises, like more than the other stocks, so that brought me more profits and as you can see we are only in April and so far the year 2021 has been great so far I mean the volatility has been going down since the last COVID crash and honestly it's been amazing to sell options during that time because the implied volatility is going down and for option sellers that's exactly what you want because it makes option prices cheaper and cheaper over time so so far it's really been going great and I'm really eager to see what the rest of 2021 is going to show and if we go into the history meaning that you can see really transactions transaction by transaction, you see that I basically have a bit of everything. I mean, I can go over all the trades, I can show you. You see that whenever I buy back a trade, so when it's shown in green, meaning that I'm paying a debit, it's usually because I'm closing a position and for a profit overall, meaning that I usually sell options, then I'm going to try to buy back at 50% profit. So basically, every time when you see a green line, it means that I'm paying a debit, that I'm closing a position for a profit overall. I don't know how many trades I've done since the beginning of 2021 i don't necessarily trade like let's say five times a day but i usually take around two three trades a week that's usually what i'm going to stick to on a weekly basis after that there are some weeks where i'm going to have more activity i'm going to sell more trades or i'm going to close more trades but usually it's around two three trades a week after that i can also show you this because i think it's quite interesting but i also receive quite a lot of dividends from uh, all those stocks that all those companies that have bought shares on and i'm basically reinvesting all the dividends that I received. So um, as you can see, for example, I received some dividends for Walmart. I received 55 cents from Walmart and then it got reinvested directly and those 8 cents are taxes that I'm paying. And you see that I reinvested 47 cents directly. And I basically, every time that I receive a dividend, it gets reinvested automatically. I don't have to do anything. And something that I really like to do, and I feel it's a good balance for me, is that I have my option portfolio where I'm more active. I'm going to trade actively in it and also have my stock portfolio where I have shares in. And the good thing about this is that when the market is going up, it's making my stock portfolio take value, appreciate in value. And in the meantime, I'm training my option portfolio so as to improve 
improve my returns. So you can see that overall it's quite nice. I mean, I have some nice returns since the beginning of 2021 and hopefully it's going to be the same way for the rest of 2021. But basically managing my option portfolio the way I do and I made plenty of videos on what are the processes that I follow, why I do certain things, what is my thought process behind strategies and so far it's really been working well and it's been like this for the year 2020 also and 2021 seems to be going well so far. I hope you enjoyed this video where you can see more of my trades, how I trade personally, what are my transaction statements and if you have any questions on the different trades that I take or what is my portfolio composed of, just put a comment down below, just ask me in the comment section, I'll be happy to answer any question that you might have. Please make good and informed decisions. I'll see you in the next video and in the meantime, I wish you all the best.